all that is needed is the sacrifice of my five belly loaves and two fish. A deep reflection on what is going on in our families, our societies, our country, and the world at large, one will be deeply depressed and worried, especially as regards the crisis caused by human selfishness, greed, excessive desire for power and influential things of this passing world. This, no doubt, bring about the effects of wars we hear around us, kidnapping and all the crimes, high inflation of basic human needs, they are no longer affordable, which brings about several protests around the group, including our country, Nigeria, the rumor and the planning of protests or no protests, as well as the effects of the ongoing hunger pandemic, which are taking different forms and shapes in our country today. Hence, we are constantly in need of one thing or the other. We are never tired of searching for things that will satisfy our desire for physical and spiritual well-being. We constantly search for it. What is it that will satisfy our physical needs? What is it that we satisfy our spiritual needs? And even those things we desire to help us satisfy them seems very scarce and not available. The ones available are not affordable. This ugly situation can be compared to the condition of the people in our gospel passage today who were hungry and thirsty who were desiring for a better life. And when they heard about Jesus, they went after him on foot, searching for solutions to their problems. So, as Jesus stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them and healed their sicknesses, and also miraculously fed them with just five Belly, loaves, and two fish provided by a little boy. This is a very touchy story that this little boy made available the little that he had. Everything he gave it to them. And that was the only one available. It seems as if it's the only one was available. But I don't know whether that's the fact. But the fact is that one person provided what? The only five belly loaves and two what? Fish. Here, Jesus fulfills his role as expected Messiah who is to liberate his people from all kinds of diseases and troubles. The healing touch of Jesus reveals to all those who are in need that God is faithful to his promises. God never failed in his promises. These healing and wholeness are offered as a sign of the presence of God's kingdom among his people. But Jesus did not just heal the sick. He also fed the crowd in fulfillment of God's words in our first reading today when prophet Elisha said thus says the Lord they will eat and have some what left over they will eat and have some left over because the Lord will provide for them here the Lord Jesus served them they ate and had some left over as the Lord has said. 
This shows the connection of this prophecy with the miracle in our gospel reading today. You can see the connection of this prophecy made through these prophets. That the Lord will feed his people and they will have what's left over. This was fulfilled in our gospel passage today where Jesus fed the people and they had what's left over. Remember, he still mentioned what? This time around, he said, 20 loaves of belly and what? Fresh air of green in the sack. That was what the prophet prophesied. But this time around, it was what? Just what? Five belly loaves and what? Two fish. Brothers and sisters, this is a very important um, message for us. So, we can interpret this miracle of feeding the crowd in two ways. We can understand it in two ways. First, we can simply interpret it as a miraculous event pointing to the divine origin of the mission of Jesus who has come to save us from all our trouble. We can just define it like that. That this is a miraculous event that shows us the, who Jesus is, his origin, his purpose, his mission. And for the fact that this is a fulfillment of a prophecy already mentioned, so we can say that this is a God's work communicating something great to us. So it's a great miracle. Secondly, we can interpret the miracle as the fruit of sharing in a sacrificial way. For it is possible that once the disciples began to share, the little five belly loaves and two fish provided sacrificially by the little boy which Jesus blessed, other people who also had brought some food with them which were they are hiding or keeping to themselves, started also sharing their own goods that they brought with them. And by the grace of God, multiplication happened and this becomes the miracle we are celebrating today. It's just like all of us sitting down here now and we look around. Oh, please, who has... Uh, 1,000 naira here. Everybody be, begin to look and one little boy raises his 1,000 naira up and uh, I said, okay, give it to me. And uh, we're able to bring the 1,000 and raise it up, pray over it and begin to give out, maybe uh, change the 1,000 naira to maybe 550 naira and begin to share it. Other people who have plenty begin to bring it out. What happened? We have excess. At the end of it, what happened? We have excess 1,000 left over and even other change because what happened? People begin to bring what they have. When this little boy offered the little he had and the Lord blessed it and they sat down and begin to share. This miracle can be explained in that way. But the major message here is that a boy sacrificed the little he has, just five belly loaves of bread and what? Two fish. And that's the only person who made his own belly loaf what available. Others did what? We are holding their own. We are waiting. And you could imagine what happened because it was a desert. It was a place where they know they're going to be hunger strike. So what did they do? Keep my own. Those who say keep it, keep it, keep it. It's not yet time. Let when others start eating, we bring it out. So, but we are searching and looking for something we can use to do what? Help ourselves. But everybody is keeping it to themselves. Until this boy broke the chain and offered what is hers. This is a great lesson for us. Because in this miracle, we can see that. If we can let go of our selfish and greedy attitudes and make little sacrifice of our five belly loaves and two fish, we can bring about that miracle we all desire in our lives as individuals, families, societies, country, and the world at large. 
if we all begin to bring out the five belly loaves we have. But the question is, what are these five belly loaves and two fish? What are they? What can we compare to these five belly loaves and two fish? What can we liken it to in our own present condition? These are those special things we have on our own acquired and cherished and holding them so tight. But we have refused to offer them for the well-being and goodwill of humanity. All those things that we are holding so tight, all those things that we are saying, it is my own, I will keep it now and for later I will use it. These are the five belly loaves and two fish. Those things we are hiding. Those things we are thinking that will guarantee us safety now or in the future. That money in the bank that we are not using now and we are saving it for generation upon generation. That is the five loaves and two fish. Those houses we have built beautifully well and no one is staying on them and they are decaying. That is the five loaves and two fish. Those cars we have parked in our houses and the cars are decaying. Nobody is using them. They, we are not maintaining them. It's just there. These are the five loaves and what? Two fishes. The Lord is calling us and asking anybody has anything here? Those properties we have abandoned and are decaying out there. Nobody is using them. Nobody is staying there. We surround them even with soldiers and people are protecting them and nobody is inside. This is the five loaves and two fish that the Lord say, bring them, bring them. People need them. People are hungry. People are thirsty. Those resources, we have embezzled and are hoarding them for our selfish gain. The Lord say, that is the five loaves and two fish I am looking for. Bring it out. It's not just our property. Also, our talents. Those talents and skills we have failed to use. God has given to us and we are keeping it for nothing. That, those talents, those gifts are the five loaves and two fish that the Lord said, bring them because your family need them. Society need them. People need you in the gift you have and talent that I have. The Lord said, bring them out. Those people we have failed to forgive. Those people we have abandoned. Those people we have said that you will never be well with them. The Lord say, you are the five loaves and two fish they are looking for. Just say, I am sorry. Just accept forgiveness. Just offer forgiveness. In our families, you're going to see problem, wars, crisis. People are not talking to each other everywhere. But because somebody is holding five loaves and what? Two fish of what? Unforgiveness. You can give it out today, like this little boy. And there will be peace in the home. Crisis everywhere in our home because somebody has refused to give out Five loaves and two fish of what? I am sorry. I'm sorry, forgive me. The Lord say, bring it out. Bring it out so that the miracle of peace you are looking for will happen. The Lord say, bring it out so that the miracle of wholeness in your home will happen. It is not just the act of forgiveness, but what of those people we have put in prison and hospital because of our deception and negligence? The Lord say, do something about it. These are the five loaves and two fish that they desire to have, that the miracle in their life will come true. Those people we have failed to visit, we have abandoned them. Some people have abandoned their parents and neglected them, especially today we are celebrating the elderly. Calling them, visiting them is the five love and two fish that they desire. Can you do that today for them? Can you visit that person you have abandoned? Can you make a gesture of kindness to them? This is what they desire. 
This is that five loaf, that, that two fish. They want to see, multiply and become a miracle. What of those policies we have failed to implement? Those contracts that we have failed to complete. And for this reason, people are suffering. For this reason, people are passing through hell. These are the five loaves and two fish that the world need. Bring them out. Do the right thing. These are many more are the five belly loaves and two fish we are called today to offer for our well-being and goodwill of our families, our society, our country, and humanity at large. So why are you still hiding your five belly loaves or two fish? Why are you hiding it? Why do you think that you don't have five belly loaves and two fish to offer for the well-being of others? Why do you still think so? Or is it that your life is not more than five belly loaves or two fish? Is your life an offering to others? Is your life a gift to others? Is your time a gift to others? If only we can learn to sincerely offer and utilize our God-given five belly loaves and two fish, our families, our society, our country will be better for we will have enough and even left over for other generations to come. That is the problem we are having in our world today. People are selfish. All of us are selfish. Every one of us are very selfish. The question you ask yourself, do you think that there are no enough resources to take care of all human beings in the world? For Christ's sake, all of us human beings living in this world cannot exhaust the resources in this world. It's not possible. But the problem is what we are talking about. One person grab and grab and keep. Grab and grab and keep. And when you keep them, others are looking and looking and looking and searching. But you can't let go of it. Just for you to wake up one day and you are dead. And it's over. All the things you have acquired, all the things you have heard for yourself are waste of time. Why not use them? If the Lord has blessed you, if the Lord has given you enough, use it for the well-being of others. Develop, help others. Some persons, they desire to see their account balance very huge and big. And what's the money doing there? People are suffering. Can't you empower people? Can't you open a business for them? And these people will be, even though, just like a loan without interest. Give them as a loan without interest. You take this money, make some profit, just be returning it for me as you pay. Go. They will cherish it. They will be happy. Why are we so bad? Why are we so greedy? The selfish nature of the human person wants more and more and more. The question is, when am I going to be satisfied? How much of this money will I have and I will be satisfied? If you want to understand this, you ask Bill Gates. You ask Dan Gute, you ask um, uh, uh, who again? All those big, big men. Are they, are they okay? Are they, are they, is he okay? They can, can, they can go and sleep now. now. Eh? But the good news is that they can still be extending their generosity to others. They can keep on multiplying them as long as they can empower others with what God has blessed them with. That's good thing. That's good news. But what about those who are keeping their own and they are not using it at all? They are not investing, they are not investing in others and the thing is wasting and wasting away. What about those like that? Am I like that? Am I the kind of person? You may say, oh, I know be that good thing now. I'm just a very little boy, You're just a priest. But what about those time that is so, 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 so available for me to reach out to others? What about good words? What about kind words? What about using my hand to do one or two things for others? What about helping somebody lifting his burden away and saying, just go in my way? What about that? That's the belly, five loaves and two fish we are talking about. If our family help one another, offer sacrifices, give out what we have, we will have enough in our family. We have enough. If our society do the same, we have enough. 
If today in this church we decide to be generous to one another, nobody will be suffering. Everybody will be smiling home with enough. But it's not the case. Even if somebody say, I offer 10 million naira here now. Anybody who is in need, come and collect. You will see some people who have, we say, come and collect from that one. Why are we like that? Because we are not satisfiable. And the Lord is calling our attention to that. Life of sacrifice. Also, Jesus did not just heal and feed these people physically. He also did something. He did aspects of the spiritual life of, their, of these people. That is why he fed them with something very special. And that is what? The Eucharist. Telling us that there is a link between this message today with what? The Eucharist. For as Jesus healed and fed the people physically, he also through this food of the Eucharist sustain us for our journey to heaven because this very miracle, this very miracle of feeding the crowd refer back to the journey of God's people in the desert from Mount Sinai to the promised land, which in a special way signifies the events of our Eucharistic celebration. If you watch this, this the, 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 the the whole story, you will see that there is a link between this event and our Eucharistic celebration. What happened? We all gather, longing for who? Jesus. Longing for, again for hearing his word, doing one thing or the other, expecting one thing or the other for him. When we gather from our home to this place. It's like a journey from what? Mount Sinai to the promised land. The journey that these people make to encounter Jesus. And what happened? In that journey, they came. They were expecting something. Spiritual hunger, thirsty of something. But they did not just come empty-handed. We usually do what? Come with what? Offer tree. We offer our gifts. We offer our gift that that little, tiny, five loaf and two fish that we bring as what? Host, which we offer in the table of the Lord, and we do what? We distribute back to the people. It's a significant gesture that we all need to understand. That in every Mass, when we see collection, your offering, you prepare yourself, a little sacrifice you have, you bring them, we offer it, then in procession, one little boy representing anybody who will carry the gift and the procession back to the sanctuary, give it to the priest, and the priest offer it and give us back. And the miracle happens. The miracle of what? The Eucharist. And that is what the Lord also did by teaching us that this feeding of the people is not just about their physical well-being, but also their what? Spiritual well-being. So whenever we come for Mass, we must key to that very idea and the structure of the offering of the Holy Mass. We must be part of it. And sometimes we don't know that when people are bringing offertory, those two people that usually come, they are representative of all of us. Whatever we have gathered, they are bringing it to the Lord. When the priest prayed over them, you can see that when that gift is in brought, what happened? Everybody stands up. It means that we all are in one unity represented by what? The people bringing the gift. So it's not a time for you to be whirling out time and waiting for something you don't know. You must connect with it spiritually. You must be part of that blessing. You must be part of that offering. That is when bring to the Lord your offerings. In his holy place. Are you bringing your offertory that time along with people who are joining to the altar? So they move from back to the front. The movement from Mount Sinai to the world promised land. That is the structure of our mass. 
But sometimes we are just sitting down there. We don't even know what is going on. Oh, yeah, let us stand. Oh, yeah, let us sit. That is it. You must connect with the mass spiritually. This is what the Lord Jesus is teaching us. This bread is the gift of the Eucharist, which we receive back from Jesus, whose heart is always moved with pity and compassion towards us. Dear friends, God loves us so much. He cares about us. That he is willing and ready to satisfy our unquenchable hunger for physical and spiritual well-being. How I wish humanity could give up greed and selfishness, hatred and embezzling of our common resources in order to embrace true love for one another and learn to share our resources for the purpose for which God created them. Believe me, if we do this, we, when this is done and well organized, we will also experience again the miracle of multiplication of resources that will be enough for every one of us and even have left over for future generation. But we have failed to embrace this love. We have failed to share this love with one another or give up our ugly attitude of selfishness. Little wonder, St. Paul, in our second reading, employs us to lead a life worthy of our vocation. Live a life worthy of our vocation. By doing what? Bringing with one another all those things God has given us in a charitable way. He says, in this very action, we must give up selfishness and wear what? Selflessness gentleness, patience. He encourages us to persevere in unity of the spirit. The peace and bind that bind us together must be uphold. For we are sharing what? One what? One faith, one baptism, one God, one father of all who is above all and through all and in all. If we have this sense of unity, if we have the sense of care, if we have this sense of well-being, we can make this sacrifice possible. We can make it possible. The problem is that there's one thing our rector, former rector, the Bishop of Warren now used to say. The problem we have is lack of what? Goodwill. Goodwill. If we have goodwill, we help one another. If humanity change our selfishness into the attitude of having, having goodwill for others, things will be fine. Things will be better. But one thing happened. We are always scared. If I do this, what will be the repercussion? If I do that, what will be the repercussion? We imagine that this little boy said, I don't know, this is the only thing I have. And he hides this five loaf and two fish. We won't be having miracle to talk about today. If you desire the well-being of your family, the well-being of our society, the well-being of this country, the well-being of humanity at large, offer yourself as offering for God. Because we too are what? Are blessed through the offer and sacrifices of others. Our parents offer and we are existing. God brought them together and we are existing. What am I offering to others? What are you offering today? What are you holding? What is that thing you think you can hold so tight and hold it so tight and will be your life? What is it? Think about it. What is it in this world that you can hold and say with this one, I am secured completely? Nothing. It's only God that you can hold. And the greatest gift you can give to people is people you have touched their life through your gestures, through your sacrifices, through your goodwill to them. People never forget the goodwill you have done to them. Because it's done what? Sacrificially. I pray, brothers and sisters, as we listen to the, God, the word of God today, calling us to offer, calling us to unite, calling us to know that we are one people in God. May we embrace this great sacrifice and be who God has called us to be. 
and the little sacrifice we have made, may God multiply them like this miracle through Christ our Lord.